Welcome to Just Motivation. It is your decision whether or not to move past your anger and frustration. Or you can do yourself a favor by deciding to forgive and forget the past and instead focus on building a happy, fulfilling future. Because of your freedom of choice, your life can be whatever you want it to be. Let's discuss success or wealth if that's how you see it. Discussing or dwelling on one's financial woes will never lead to their resolution. This kind of thinking is fruitless and will not lead to success. Thinking about one's lack only leads to more lack, while thinking about one's gratitude leads to abundance. There aren't many statements or mindsets that will reliably keep wealth out of reach. Feeling envious of other people's wealth is a sign of envy. It just creates a barrier in your own flow. If you're open to new ways of thinking about money, you'll find that you have more of it. Money is always tight these days. That's a terrible thing to say about us. Furthermore, the one dollar is spent more quickly than it is earned. This is the reality of poverty, fearing the worst mentally. What you think of yourself and the world is the only thing the universe can react to. Think about the negative feelings you have about money and then make the conscious decision to let them go. They haven't done you any favors in the past and they certainly won't start now. Down the road, you can buy a lottery ticket once in a while for entertainment, but you shouldn't put any real stock in the lottery or expect to be financially independent as a result of playing. This is an example of poverty mentality, also known as scarcity thinking, and it will lead you nowhere good in the long run. Few people's lives improve after they win the lottery. Statistics show that within two years, the vast majority of lottery winners have given up, spent their entire windfall, and are no better off financially than before they won. Winning the lottery is not the answer to all of life's problems because it does not involve altering one's state of mind. Essentially, you're telling the universe that you don't deserve any happiness unless it happens to you by complete and utter chance. If only you could adjust your state of mind so that the universe's bounty can flood into your life. If you follow the steps to demonstrating riches far greater than you could ever win in a lottery, you could have everything you think the lottery can bring you and keep it forever because it would be yours by right of consciousness. Being untrustworthy can also hinder your success. In life, you always get back what you put out. If you take what you need from life, life will take what it needs from you. That's how easy it is. You might think you're not a thief. Do you plan on stealing office supplies like paper clips and stamps? Or perhaps you're someone who steals time, or maybe you steal respect from others, or maybe you steal relationships. All of these things add up and are a way of telling the universe that you don't feel you deserve the good things in life, and so you have to steal them. Learn to recognize the thoughts that are preventing money from entering your life. The next step is to replace those false beliefs with more positive, productive ones. Even if no one in your family has ever done this before, you can train your mind to accept the idea of financial success. We need to adopt a mindset focused on prosperity if we are to achieve it. I've found great success with two prosperity affirmations I've been using for a while now. They'll help you out too. First, I'm always making more money. Second, it seems like I am always on the winning side of things. When I first started using them, I was severely strapped for cash. However, through diligent training, I was able to realize my goals. For quite some time, I suppose. In my opinion, business is a place where people can find mutual blessing and success. Trying to get one over on another person in business is something I just can't wrap my head around. It doesn't sound like a very happy existence to me. If only people were more willing to share the wealth that exists in the world. Hay House, my publishing company, has a long history of being honest, honorable, reliable, hardworking, and generous. Money can't be kept out of the unit when you live like that. You can find benefits in verse at every turn. We now have such a fantastic reputation in the publishing industry that we have to turn away business. We don't want to get too big and lose that one-on-one -on -one connection with our customers. If I, a neglected and unschooled child, can succeed, anyone can. Likewise, 
you can affirm joyfully once a day, I am open and receptive to all the good and abundance in the universe by standing with your arms spread wide, and may life hear your prayers for prosperity and bless you abundantly. Use these heartfelt, meaningful affirmations to attract the Benjamins. Money seems to be drawn to me. Wherever I go to work, success of all kinds comes to me. I receive a lot of respect and am paid well. I am grateful to exist in a universe that is full of love and abundance and harmony. I've decided to stop closing myself off to the infinite wealth that exists in the world. Everything I need for survival is readily available. In life, I have faith. My mindset shifts from one of scarcity to one of abundance has a positive effect on my bank account. I give thanks for the many blessings in my life. Wonderful surprises await me every day, and I always pay my bills with affection. And with each check, I'm happy as can be. I am a conduit for abundance. I am deserving of nothing but the best. As for me, I'll take the best now. As of right now, I am completely open to financial abundance flooding into my life. All kinds of people and places inspire me. Talking or thinking about how much of a klutz you are will never allow you to express your creativity. For as long as you use the affirmation, I have no creativity, that is exactly what you will experience. Each of us is brimming with originality and imagination, and if we release it, it will astound and amuse us. Each of us is connected to the infinite wellspring of inspiration that is the universe. While some of us may be naturally more gifted at creative expression, we can all do it. Each day we make our lives anew. All of us are special in our own ways. Too many of us had well-intentioned adults stifle our creativity as kids. One of my teachers told me I was too tall to dance, and someone I know was told he was not artistic because he had drawn a different tree. It's ridiculous too, but as kids we just blindly followed orders. However, you are now able to surpass them. The idea that only artists can be creative is another fallacy. That's just one example of the inventiveness that's present in your life at all times, beginning with the mundane but essential process of making new cells. Everything you do, from the emotional reactions you choose at work, to the financial decisions you make, to the friendships you cultivate, and the self-perceptions you cultivate, is the result of your creativity. You could also be an excellent bed maker, a talented cook, an innovative problem solver at work, a green thumb gardener, or an inventive helper to others. You can express your individuality and creativity in countless other ways as well. No matter what form your artistic self-expression takes, if you'll let spirit lead the way, you'll find the happiness and fulfillment you seek in everything you do. Remember that spirit never makes a blunder. When you feel an overwhelming urge to make something or tell a story, realize that this dissatisfaction or yearning is a sign from higher powers, whatever it may be. If we follow it, we will be protected, directed, and guaranteed to succeed. When we are presented with a direction or a goal, we can choose to have faith and move forward, or we can continue to be paralyzed by our fears. The secret is to believe in your own inherent greatness. I understand the terror it may cause. We can overcome our shared apprehensions and do what needs to be done. Keep in mind that the cosmos is on your side and cheers for your achievements. Every waking moment is a creative expression from you. In fact, you never do anything else besides use your imagination. You are always acting in your own distinctive manner, secure in the knowledge that you can finally let go of the false notion that you lack the capacity for original thought and take on any and all ideas that come to mind. And remember that age is just a number. I was in my mid-40s before I realized the significance of my own life. I first became a teacher back when. I started a tiny publishing company when I was 50. I started learning about computers at the age of 55, taking classes and getting over my initial anxiety. At 60, I planted my first garden and am now a self-sufficient organic vegetable grower. I started taking an art class for kids when I was 70, and in my 70s, I also completely redid my handwriting. Your handwriting can change your life by Vimala Rogers has been an inspiration to me. 
At the ripe old age of 75, I enrolled in an art class for adults and am now actively selling my paintings. My current art instructor has been encouraging me to explore sculpture. Concurrently, I began practicing yoga and have noticed some encouraging physical results. I decided a few months ago, at the ripe old age of 76, to challenge myself in new and unfamiliar ways by learning how to ballroom dance. I've been taking dance classes multiple times a week and it's like coming home. Who knows what I'll end up doing in life, but I enjoy expanding my knowledge by learning about new things. But I know that until the day I die, I will continue to do my affirmations and express new creative ideas. One can always make a decision. That's an entitlement everyone has. The choices we make today will determine whether or not we are enslaved by the past and the things that keep us bound to a life of lack of resources. This is entirely up to our own discretion. The choices we make each day determine whether we remain stuck in our past selves or forge ahead into a brighter future. Until next time. Now I know that you have read that loving yourself is the most powerful thing we can do, and I know that you have heard me say that many times. Then everything falls into place. Everything works together in a beautiful flow. And I'm not talking about being vain or arrogant because neither one of those things constitutes love. That is always a source of fear. I'm referring to the practice of truly recognizing and appreciating this incredible and magnificent being that we are. You already know how to love yourself. So why don't we treat ourselves the same way? You were all conceived from the purest form of love. To my knowledge, there is not a single infant in existence who has ever expressed dissatisfaction with their physique or commented anywhere along the lines of, my hips are too big. Have you ever heard a young child say something like that? They can hardly contain their excitement and joy at the discovery that they have a body. They take great joy in it, and they have a healthy love for themselves. They are completely in love with every aspect of themselves, including their toes. They adore something tremendously. They are able to articulate their emotions. You should know that a baby is content. You know that when a young child is upset, the entire neighborhood is aware of it. They never feel uncomfortable expressing how they truly feel to other people. They are completely present in the now. In addition to this, they exude an abundance of bravery. They're wonderful, by the way, and every one of us was the same. You have to keep in mind that you were brimming with bravery and that you were overflowing with love. When you were a young child, you were completely enamored with yourself. I believe that everything you say and everything you think is projected out into the universe, where it is amplified and eventually returns to you in some form or another. It's almost as if the universe is listening to everything you say and everything you think and then responding with, oh, that's what they want. However, the majority of the time when we talk about ourselves, we do so in a very derogatory manner and emphasize how terrible we are. We do not meet the standards. This one is out of the question and so is that one. If that's the way you're talking, how can the universe bring you anything good? Just because you're saying there's a quality of life doesn't mean you have to live in a really nice house or have really nice things. On the other hand, it is not required to. It would be much better if you had an old car and you were grateful and appreciative of life. There is a law of thinking and we are just beginning to learn about it. But what good is a nice car if you are full of resentment all the time and you drive around hating everybody? That's not going to help anything and it is comparable to a computer in the sense that if someone were to place a stunning computer in front of you but you had no idea how to use it, it would be the same thing. It's a useless piece of trash. But if you know how to speak the language of the computer, you can perform miracles. To put it another way, this is the law of thinking. What you think and what you believe is what will come true for you because your thoughts create your life. When you learn how it works, miracles happen. What you think and what you believe is what will come true for you. It can be summed up like this, and once we have that, we will be able to affect significant change. One of the things that comes to mind when I think about the work that I do and the work that our company does is that every product that we sell, 
or the product that you receive as a gift from us has the potential to change the quality of your life for the better. This is something that I think about when I do the work that I do and when I think about the work that our company does. Now, it is entirely up to you to decide whether or not you will actually seize that opportunity. That is true freedom. However, you are in possession of everything that we distribute, which has the potential to significantly enhance the standard of living for individuals and makes you feel good. When there is a problem, we will listen. The vast majority of people might say, let's go, oh, panic, God, blah, blah, what on earth are we going to do? But I have something that I have tried to get other people to say, and that is when the minute there is a problem, you stop and you go, all is well, all is well, everything is working out for my highest good, and out of this experience, only good will come and I am safe. This is something that I have tried to get other people to say, and you do this, if it's a minor matter, you say it twice or three times. If it's a significant problem, you ramble on about it over and over again. But don't worry, everything is going to be okay. This circumstance is working out for my highest good. Nothing but good will come of it, and I won't be in any danger. Now that you have this, it helps to calm the turmoil going on inside of you for long enough for the universe to figure out how to solve the so-called problem. When there are issues, it's not so much that we need to fix the issues themselves as it is that we need to fix our thinking and our perspective on how we should react to those issues. And then you continue to receive fewer and fewer. And when the solution presents itself, you express gratitude and then begin the process that we refer to as performing affirmations. And that includes saying positive things about your life in the context of positive statements. You might do them in the morning, you might do them at noon, you might do them at night, you might do them, you know, twice a day or whatever, which you do this and you let this become a habit. And you do them deliberately. And as you begin to do them, things will begin to change, although it may only be on a very small level at first. I refer to this as getting the green lights and the parking places. Even though they are not particularly significant in the grand scheme of things, Things like getting three green lights in a row can be quite enjoyable, and you are pressed for time. You can do an affirmation by either writing it down, writing it on the wall or the mirror, or using a, you know, just saying it. What I recommend to people who want to do their affirmations is to stand in front of a mirror while they say them. Because looking into your own eyes is a very empowering experience in its own right. And coming to terms with and accepting yourself or becoming aware of the ways in which you reject yourself even when you are saying something positive about yourself. Therefore, beginning with that would be a very basic step to take. Let's say you wake up and the first thing you do is check out your reflection in the mirror. This is a significant point to make and it's challenging for a lot of different people. You look at yourself in the mirror and I say I love you over and over again. I say I really, really love you. To begin, this can be very challenging for individuals because they tend to focus on the shortcomings they perceive to exist within themselves as a whole. But if you can start your day by saying that, it is very powerful. As a society, we do have a tendency to want to be fixed, right to have that. But if you can start your day by saying that, it is very powerful. The end, as they say. I hope that once I have resolved this issue, this will be the last one. I won't have to worry about anything ever again. I am aware that many of us simply want to stop when we reach a secure location. I mean, you have some money, you have some nice friends, and you have a good house to live in. So I think it's safe to say that you're doing okay. You are aware of this and you consider it to be acceptable. I'm not going to have any more contact with anything, but I have observed myself and the way that my life operates is such that when I get to a really good level, then it is like, okay, now I'm gonna deal with this thing. This is how it works for me, yeah. And there's one more thing and I've realized that the best thing to do is to simply ask, okay, what should I do? Instead of leaving me alone, just say yes, yes, and no. Don't even bother talking to me about that topic. Yeah, I express gratitude to you many, many, many times throughout the day, and most of the time I don't say it to anyone else. 
I just wanted to say thank you very much. That is such a wonderful thing. Thank you. And as time goes on, you realize that there are an increasing number of reasons to be grateful. Today, as we were driving up from San Diego, I noticed that the wildflowers growing on the hillside are in particularly stunning condition this year. And at that very moment, I was reflecting on how grateful I was to have the chance to meet them. Because if I had stayed down there, I would have avoided having to make this drive, which was not a drive that I particularly wanted to make. But the scenery was breathtaking. If you have deeply ingrained beliefs that you don't deserve to have good things happen to you in life, this is a problem. Due to the fact that a large number of people have it, there may be delays. And there are those who argue that affirmations aren't effective at all. I have completed them. But when they are, for example, doing prosperity affirmations, and after doing some prosperity affirmations, they say that it doesn't work and that nothing is happening, we know that they are not doing it correctly. And I respond by asking, all right, how many affirmations of abundant living did you do in a single day? They'll most likely respond with the number three. They ask, all right, how many poverty affirmations have you done today, throughout the day? And that could be 300. It all depends on where you're coming from and what thoughts are going through your head at the moment. You can see that I have this. One of the things that goes through my head about life is that it can only get better from here on out. And I have been emphasizing this point for a considerable amount of time. Therefore, it makes little difference to me either way. I'm not concerned about what happens in life as long as it's a good experience. You were watching Just Motivation.